In the headlines, upsets in states as INEC declares winners of governorship election. Governorship election in Kebu State declared inconclusive. One dies, three injured as soldiers police clash in Taraba. South Africa arrests 87 before planned anti-government protest. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ila. Thanks for joining. And now the details. A former vice president and PDP's presidential candidate in the 2023 presidential election, Atiku Abubakar, has called on the Independent National Electoral Commission to immediately announce results for Fumfure, local government area of Adama State. The former VP made the call while addressing journalists in Yola following the delay in announcing a winner for the Adama State governorship poll hailed held on Saturday. He urged residents of Adama State to be calm after clashes between security agencies and angry youth erupted in the early hours of Monday. I want to draw the attention of Nigeria and the international community to what is currently happening in Adama State. We have concluded our elections very peacefully and the results are there, even on the portal for everybody to see. Whichever scenario you decide to take, PDP has won. What we are appealing to INEC is to announce the results as expressed by the people of Adamawa State. We see no reason why there should be a delay in the announcement of these results. The more they delay, the more tension, you know, they raise in this state. This is a multi-ethnic and multi-religious state. We have been living peacefully, we are united, and this singular action of INEC is trying to destabilize the peace and the unity that has long existed in this state. The Independent National Electoral Commission has announced the winner of Bochi State Governorship election at the INEC State Headquarters after receiving calls, uh, receiving all the 20 local government areas results. Governor Bala Abdul Qadir Mohammed of the People's Democratic Party emerged the winner of the election after defeating 14 other candidates. Trust TV's Adam Imam reports. The returning officer of the governorship election in Bauchi State, Professor Sabo Abdul Karim, after a collection and compilation of results, says the incumbent governor, Bala Abdul Qadir Mohammed, has won the election. PDP, having satisfied the requirement of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Thank you. He also responded on the legality of the results after several cancellations in many wards across different local government areas. Before I will tell you that in Bolshe State we have much, much low number of in many other states. So cancellation has happened because of irregularities, maybe it's either violence or what And it's within the law for the cancellations are made. But uh, it's not many actually in the state. You can go and look at the records. Uh, you compare it to even other states, we have very few uh, cancellations in my opinion. Thank you. one word, Ayla, uh, uh, who gives power at the time he wishes and to the person he wishes. Uh, and we thank the people of Bochi State for coming out in mass to renew this mandate given to Senator Balaa Abdul Mohammed, uh, the executive governor of Bochi State, who has another four years to continue with the work he has been doing in Bochi across the country local governments. However, APC and NNPP agents kick against the results and refuse to sign the collation sheet, claiming irregularities during the process. This is a book result. I have met several alerts before all the news, uh, the news uh, agents here. You know, you are living with me when I met a little uh, remark. Meanwhile, the streets of Bochi were filled with supporters 
jubilating and happy with the process, hoping that this year will bring the much-needed development in the state. Adami Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Again, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano has declared Abba Kabir Yusuf of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, as the winner of this Saturday's governorship election. The state returning officer, Ahmed Duku, declared that Abba scored a total of 1,019,602 votes to defeat his counterpart of the APC, Nasiru Gauna, who scored 892,705 uh, votes. Correspondent Idris Debrain reports. After an all day and night long collision of results across all the 44 local government areas of Kano State, the moment Kano people have been waiting arrived. The declaration. The election was contested. The candidates received the following votes Ibrahim Sha'aban Sha'arada of ADP scored 9,402. Votes. Number five, Gauna Nasiru Yusuf of APC scored 890,705 votes. Bashir Ishak Bashir of LP scored 5,409 votes. Number 11, Yusuf Abba Kabir of NNPP scored 1,019,602 votes. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission in Kano, out of the 5,921,370 registered voters, 2,329,055 voters got accredited, out of which 2,004,964 votes were cast across the states. That Yusuf Abba Kabir of NNPP, having satisf satisfied the requirements of the law, is hereby declared the winner and is returned elected. Updated this day, 20th March 2023. For the representatives of the new Nigeria People's Party, the process has been transparent enough and that INEC has proven to be a reliable electoral body. We thank the good people of Kano State, we thank the law enforcement agencies, especially the police and the, and the, and the Nigerian Armed Forces. We thank the INEC, we thank all our supporters, we thank the youth and women, and we are optimistic that God in his wisdom will continue to guide our candidate, will continue to guide our governor-elect, His Excellency, Engineer Abba Kabir Yusuf. Although Kano State government has since imposed docks to down curfew, to prevent violent clash, but party supporters are seen celebrating their success across many parts of Kano Metropolis. It rests to bring Trust TV News, Kano. The Speaker of Zamfara State House of Assembly, Nasiru Muazu, of the All Progressives Congress, has lost his Zurumi West constituency re election beat to Biliaminu Ismail of the People's Democratic Party. The coalition officer for Zurumi local government area, Mudasir Moriki, said that Speaker Nasir Muazu Magaria scored 9,530 votes, while his opponent of the PDP, Ismail Mudasir, scored 11,213 votes to defeat Muazu. The deputy speaker of the state assembly, Musa Bawa, and the deputy leader of the house, Nasir Lawal, Bungudu also lost his seat to Bello Mazawaje and Bashiru Dangmeri of the PDP. The returning officer for Bungudu West constituency, Yahaya Al Hassan, said that the PDP candidate Bashiru Dangmeri uh, polled a total of 25,678 to defeat his closest rival, Nasrul Lawal Bungudu of the APC, who polled 14,351 to win Bungudu West constituency seat. Chairman of the House Committee on Basic Education and most outspoken member of the Zamfara State House of Assembly, Al Hassan Kanuma, also lost his seat to PDP's Nasiru Abdullahi Maru in Maru North constituency. Kanuma polled 
10,646, while PDP Nasr Abdullahi Maru scored 22,036. The All Progressives Congress candidate Umar Muhammad Bago has been declared winner of the governorship election in Niger State. Announcing the results at the INEC headquarters, the state coalition officer Clement Alawa said that Bago polled 469,896, defeating his closest opponent, Isa Liman Kantigi of the People's Democratic Party, who scored 387,000. 476. Umar Mohamed Bago won in 20 out of the 25 local government areas, while the candidate of the People's Democratic Party won in five local government areas of Mokwa, Munya, Edati, Lavung, and Bako. The Independent National Electoral Commission has declared the Kebi state governorship election inconclusive. Annex returning officer Yusuf Saidu made the declaration on Monday in Berlin Kebi, the state capital. Saidu said that the move became necessary due to breaches of electoral laws that led to cancellations of results in polling units within 20 of the 21 local government areas. He said violence, destruction of, uh, of election materials, disruption of electoral proceedings and overvoting marked the poll. Now, before declaring the election inconclusive, APC was leading with 388,258 votes as against PDP's 342,980 votes. The People's Democratic Party has rejected the outcome of the Nasarawa state governorship election conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission and won by the incumbent governor, Abdullahi Sule. The party state coalition agent Ayuulu Baba Ayuulu made this known in Lafia after INEC declared Governor Sule as the winner of the election in the state. Abu Bakar Abdullahi sent in the report and is presented here in the studio. Shortly after the announcement by the Independent National Electoral Commission declaring the Nasara State Governor Abdullahi Sule as the elected governor for the second term, the opposition party expressed displeasure over the outcome. The party state coalition agent Ayiwulu Baba Ayiwulu said the result was not the reflection of what voters did at the polling units. I'm not at all. If I'm satisfied with the result, I should have been the first person to go and sign. I'm not satisfied with the result, neither my party or the candidate who is the supposed winner of this election. So we are not satisfied. And that extent, that, to that extent, we are protesting against us. But that is why I couldn't sign. The ruling party, on its part, described the process as transparent and commended the electoral umpire for a job well done. My recommendation for INEC begins from transparency, learning from the experience of what had taken place from the presidential elections to today. It's not only INEC that should be commended for this exercise. Uh, the security agencies have also done their bit to complement the success of this election. Meanwhile, Governor Sule thanked the people of the state for the support and promise to carry everyone along. We thank God Almighty that it has come and gone peacefully. All the stories about what will bring, the kind of problem that will happen, the type of insecurity that will be, I was very much more concerned about those ones than the election program. The reason is because I do not want my ambition to cause any kind of fatality or the life of any citizen of Nassau State. Governor Sule won the election with 347,209 votes, while his closed rival, David Mbungadu, of the PDP got 283,060. And the NMPP candidate Abdullahi Medoya scored 11,000 votes. The Taraba State Police Command has confirmed the exchange of gunshots between personnel of the Nigerian Army and the Nigerian Police Force in Jalingo in the early hours of Monday. The incident took place close to the venue of the Coalition Center for the Governorship Elections in the state. In a joint media briefing by the heads of 6th Brigade Nigerian Army Jalingo and the Taraba State Police Command, the Commissioner of Police Yusuf Amodu noted that it was a minor disagreement 
that led to the escalation of the incident, which resulted to the killing of one police officer and the injury of three others. He, however, called on the residents of Jalingo and beyond to go about their normal activities as the two organizations have set up an investigative committee to look into the major causes of the incident. The Commander Civil Brigade of General Army and the Commissioner of Police of Tolaba State Command regret the unfortunate incident that occurred this morning, 20th March, 2023, which led to clash between the military between the partner of both organizations in January. It was a minor disagreement that led to the installation of this incident. This incident is a dent in the synergy and mutual trust of both the army and the police in Talaba State have been joined. While assuring the citizens of Talaba State to go about their daily activities, the high command of both organizations have set up a joint investigation team to look into the root cause of the matter with a view to ensuring that airing personnel are brought to book. All efforts are in place to support the ongoing electoral process and to see to a successful completion. Meanwhile, the Acting Assistant Director, Army Public Relations, Lieutenant O. Oni, says that two soldiers were seriously wounded during the unfortunate incident. Collation of governorship election results at the INEC headquarters in Jalingo, which was suspended as a result of the clash between soldiers and the police, resumed today at 4.30 p.m. You're watching the news update on Trust TV, coming up shortly. We'll take a look at why ATM queues are not dispensing. Details of this and more after the break. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. This is the news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at the top stories again. Upsets in states as INEC declares winners of governorship election. Governorship election in Kebi State declared inconclusive. Now moving on, renowned election analysts working with the Center for Democracy and Development, CDD, have expressed concerns on electoral gains and emerging threats to Nigeria's democratic consolidation. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman reports that the election analyst, anal analysis uh, think tank also harped on increased citizens' vigilance and decisive action against mastermind of electoral violence, fraud and impunity for an sustained democratic experience. While acknowledging the impact of technology application for the conduct of the 2023 elections and improve voter awareness and resilience, the CDD election analysts are worried over increased electoral violence 
manipulations amongst others. It was most apparent in Zamfara where bandits and, and vigilante groups were reported to have threatened voters with death if they voted for the, for the incumbent. We also saw similar uh, incidents of voter intimidation across all the geopolitical zones, but these this were also mostly pronounced in the southeast, where something like 10 percent uh, of the polling units we observed saw some element of voter intimidation compared to 4.7 uh, percent nationwide. Vote buying was higher in the southeast of Nigeria. At the same time, intimidation was more observed in the southeast and the south-south part of the country uh, itself. And the huge, the most impacted by low deployment of security personnel again was in the southeastern part of the country. They believe that enhanced citizens' vigilance and resilience, in addition to consolidation and technology application in the electoral process, will pave way for a more transparent and acceptable outcome. We are still grappling for the vote counts, uh, but for some places for their resilience and determination to protect their votes, they were able to succeed. For example, in Kanu, there was so much effort to undermine the, um, the voters' um, votes in Kanu. But I think for the resilience of the people, they were able to insist that their votes must not be translated. One of the important issues about this election is more and more parties are winning seats, are gaining votes, and that therefore we are developing a more genuine multi-party electoral system. I think this is a significant gain. The analysts also call for decisive action against electoral offenders to address rising cases of impunity Suppression is a version of public will. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Scarcity of Naira, which many believed will curb money laundering and vote buying as well as sustain digital economy, is still biting in Abuja, the nation's capital. Now that the elections have come and gone, people are optimistic that the currency may be readily available to Nigerians though at the moment the status remains. Noel Samson went round the Federal Capital Territory to see if the situation has changed. With the reintroduction of the old currency back into the society and the conclusion of the 2023 general elections, many Nigerians are hopeful that the nearest scarcity will be a thing of the past. However, two days after the governorship and state assembly election, people still find it difficult to assess the high-end monies kept in the bank. I came here since about 8 a.m. wanting to have some money. So at the point, they now told us that there's no money. So I now said, okay, we have wasted so much hours up to this point. You couldn't give me any money. And out of vexation, I want to leave. And then the banker is telling me I should have a nice day. I said, how can I have a nice day when, you did, when I spent so much hours in your bank? You didn't give me any money. There is no improvement at all. If I'm going home now, I don't even have a cash. And the bank, I don't know whether they fought it from the bank or from the central bank, but the truth is that they should just do something. They promised that after the election, everybody had this mindset that it's the election that is holding up the money. But now, election is over. So let them make us enjoy being a citizen of this country. I was supposed to take a normal drop from my house to this place. I had to take a boat because I don't have cash. So it's not reduced in any way. Scarcity is still in vogue. It's, I think, I feel like it's even worse. Because now there's um, actually the banks are not even paying. I'm just coming from the bank. Uh, actually, we cannot say it has stopped because we're still facing the same thing we're facing before the elections. Like imagine having like 30k in your account and before you can have access to 10k, the debit you even have is very heartbreaking. So the government should kindly just come to the aid of Nigeria. Some automated teller machines are still not dispersing cash, prompting people to appeal to authorities concerned to come to their aid as many small businesses are struggling to stay afloat. No, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, on the foreign scene, South African security forces say 87 people have been arrested in the last 12 hours across the country over public violence before planned protests by the left-wing Economic Freedom Fighters Party. 
The EFF, the third largest party in the country, has called for a national showdown, shutdown to the protests, uh, crippling uh, power uh, cuts and demand the resignation of President Cyril Ramaphosa. EFF leader Julius Malema said that ports, parliament, border crossings and the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, among others, will be targeted as key protesting points. Authorities say that there will be a heavy police presence to deal with any possible violence. Parliament said in a statement on Sunday that the South African military will deploy 3,474 soldiers for a month until April 17 to prevent and combat crime in cooperation with the police. And that's a wrap on the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.